Hi, nerds! I'm Shane. And I'm Rebecca. And we're from Venture Forth, a D&D podcast! We're making a video here about how to play Dungeons and Dragons. Like, a thousand foot level. A thousand foot level of, what do you, of Dungeons and Dragons? What do you mean? That sounds really intimidating. That's like corporate level, like bird's eye view. Like, we're not gonna get into the nitty gritty. We're gonna get uh -oh. like a thousand feet up. Oh, okay. A broad <laughs> video about how to play Dungeons and Dragons. Hmm? I've been a little reticent to make a video like this because I feel like there's so many of, of this on the internet. There's like a lot of sources, resources, and guides, and those kinds of things, and they're all great. And so, like, I don't really feel the need to make something uh, additional to that. But a lot of folks ask us uh, if we have something that we've made uh, on this front. You ask for something, we're gonna deliver it. The D&D movie came out today, like tonight, the night that we're recording this. And a lot of people are buying D&D books and a lot of people want to know how to play because they've experienced this world and they want to know how to get into it. So we're here to give you some tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. But really just the bas most basic. A thousand, a thousand foot. foot. What was it? Is that right? Hmm? Thousand, thousand foot D&D coming at you fast. <laughs> Mm -hmm. What was the first thing you uh, did, Rebecca, when you first got into Dungeons and Dragons? I made a character. This is actually my favorite part of D&D. I think it's one of the best parts of it, is building your character. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do this, but it is, I think, the, the, the most mm -hmm. difficult entry point, right? It's the most intimidating part of it. So yeah, yeah. there's a couple really simple ways uh, to handle that. Uh, they what do you recommend? I would recommend, <laughs> if you're really intimidated by it, and that's understandable, it's a lot of numbers. <laughs> um, I feel like you're edging me out a little bit. Can we move oh. a little bit this way? There we go. I would recommend getting a pre-generated sheet. If you have a DM, they're probably going to have some on hand or they'll be happy to generate one for you. And if you don't have a DM, you can find them on the internet. There's a lot of good resources. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put links somewhere. That, that's basically, like, if it's if it at all intimidating to you, there are so many resources and, and uh, you can get pre-generated sheets. You can use a, a random name generator for your character and that will give you everything you need to sit down at a table and play D&D. The first character I ever played with in Pathfinder, not D&D, &D, but, mm -hmm. but it was a pre-generated character and it was a way to just kind of, my brother handed me a sheet and said, here, and I said, cool, um, and then proceeded to play very poorly, but that's okay. It is okay. Also, who, there's no way to play poorly. Stabbing people in the back constantly. Being a, being a mean person. <laughs> That's not a good one. That's how you play poorly. That's how you sure. play poorly. If you're a if you jerk. Don't, if you're not there to have a good time. If you're like antisocial and, and antagonistic, yeah. If you're a sociopath, yeah, you're going to you have a bad time. If you don't like people and are not nice to them. And if you roll before you're asked. But but Shane, what, but, but Rebecca? But, but Shane, where can I play? How do I find players? I am one person. It is a co-op game. How do I do that? Well, there's a lot of good resources for that, Rebecca. What would you recommend to yourself, to your own question? The first place I ever played D&D was at a gaming store. There are lots of gaming stores out there. I bet there's one in your hometown, wherever that may be. That ours was Next Gen Comics and Collectibles in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, yep, that was ours. Mm -hmm. um, but there are lots of gaming stores out there that probably have a D&D &D table night, that probably have what's called Adventures League, which is like a kind of intro to D&D. &D. It's um, effectively like the World of Warcraft of D&D. &D. It's, it's mm -hmm. like an interconnected network of uh, uh, sponsored yeah. campaigns and uh, you can play the same character everywhere you go. It's a great place to start. Uh, that yeah, might... I'm going to put her away. <laughs> Oh, like, it's not funny if she's doing it during your talking. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you're already a gamer and you already use Discord, there are lots and lots of D and D, like open D and D Discords that you can join that have player finders. Additionally, there's a site called Roll Twenty um, that some people use as a it's a virtual tabletop. Um, which allows people to play D&D virtually and has like maps and stuff um, But they also have a player finder and like table finder generator where you can play with random people Caveats are that you don't necessarily know who you're playing with and you know just like in any online Gaming you might get some shitty any people. online anything any online anything there might be shitty people out there. So like Use your best judgment yeah, and don't give up if you end up with a shitty uh, first table. That's, yeah, that's, you uh, deserve a good table. That's a fact. 
But Shane, you know, what if you try all these different tools to find a table and you just don't jive with any of the DMs that are out there? Well, there's this really cool solution for if you're having trouble finding a DM who wants to play with you. What's that? You have to DM yourself. Which actually isn't that scary! Because <laughs> it actually turns out that most people that you know would be down for a night of D&D, &D, mm -hmm. especially if you're hosting. And you actually don't really need to know the rules very well to DM. You can make them up as you go, especially if you're playing with a bunch of new players. Nobody's got any stake in it being a uh, uh, fair, in, in, integris, is that a word? Game with integrity. <laughs> Nobody cares about that, so just give it a shot. It's actually way easier than you would think, and you're gonna have fun no matter what, truly, because you're gonna be hanging out with your friends, exploring a fantasy world, mm -hmm. telling a story collaboratively. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. So just uh, give it your best. It's not uh, as scary as it seems. True. And it's deeply rewarding. Shane, have you ever DM'd? I have. Oh. And I'm going to be soon. But if you are uh, interested in the rules and want to understand them and don't want to spend any money, it actually turns out that uh, Wizards of the Coast provides the basic rules on their website for free. Sure. Uh, it's about 15 pages of like the actual rules and then there's like a hundred something, maybe more, maybe hundreds of like encyclopedic stuff. So don't be intimidated by the page count. It's, it's really very uh, a quick read uh, for both players and DMs who are looking to just get their feet wet. If I asked you, Shane, I, I just want to know how I can play. <sighs> This is a D20. Of course, it is the iconic symbol of Dungeons and Dragons. This is the only die that really matters, quite frankly. <laughs> There's a lot of die, right? Everybody's obsessed with their collections of die. Understandably, they're beautiful and lovely. I, I, I'm a huge, I'm a huge collector myself. But this is the only one that you really need to roll most, most of the of time. time. Almost, what, what would you say, ninety percent of the time? That's yeah, math. Yeah. I did that math in my head. Most it was of really, the time. yeah, that's it's accurate. Just... So the core of any D and D interaction is. You want to do something. You ask your DM if you can do that thing. The DM tells you what kind of check that is going to be. And then you look at your character sheet, look for the thing your DM said. So let's say it's a strength check. You're gonna look for your strength modifier on your character sheet. You're gonna roll your 20 sided die and then you're gonna add that modifier to the check. And then whatever number you get, is the quality of the check that you've made, the level of strength that you have used in the check, and your DM will determine whether or not you were successful. So let's uh, give an example. What do okay. you think? So, DM. Yes. You're so handsome today. Oh, thank you. I would really like to get in, into this door. Can I open it? Uh, how do you want to do that? Well, I just want to try the knob first. Well, you try the knob, but it's locked. Oh. Can I try to shove it open? Okay. You're going uh, to shoulder it? You're going to shoulder charge the I'm door? I'm just going to shoulder charge the door. Okay, make a strength check. That's an eight. An eight on your uh, strength modifier is? My strength modifier is two. Okay, you have a plus two, so that's a ten. Fortunately, this door is made of uh, congealed straw, so you successfully shoulder charge through the door. Yes. Congratulations. You made it into the bathroom. Was anyone else in it? Like no. It was locked? No, it was, uh, it locked? It was an ancient bathroom in a, a temple. With a straw door? With a straw door. Wow. My world is full of mystery. <laughs> and that's the essence of any uh, interaction you have in D&D. The only changes on top of that are uh, some conditions might help you, and therefore you would get advantage, meaning you would roll the tw die twice and take the higher number. Uh, let's say you had a friend helping you shoulder charge the door. That would give you advantage. Teamwork makes the dream work. But let's say uh, there was a person on the other side of the door holding it shut. That would give you disadvantage, which means you would roll the die twice and take the lower number. Advantage and disadvantage um, can be tough when you first start playing, but remember that your fellow players and your DM are there to help you. And if you forget something or you don't know what that means, you can just say, what do you mean? Also, if you're intimidated by math, none of us are good at it. Mm -mm. You None forget of us. all of it when you Your eat DM it. is bad at math. It, it's a very high probability that that's the case. You're going to fail at the math. Just rely on your friends to help you figure out what the, what the total is. Or fingers. Or use your fingers. That's what I do. Or calculator. I'm not pushing you out. You, you made a choice to be there. 
what if I found a table and uh, it's not quite what I expected? Uh, I wanted to be, play a really cool character, but I'm not really getting the opportunity to do the things I wanted to do. Somebody else at the table knows a lot more about the game than I do, so they're just kind of like blitzkrieging through it. Uh, what do I do? I would say you should talk to your DM. You should talk to your dungeon master. Communicating to your DM is uh, pretty much the most important thing uh, in the game. In fact, communicating to your whole table is really important. If that's a little uncomfortable because you're playing with strangers, then the DM is your go-to. They will want you to have a great experience. If they're worth anything as a DM, they will be very invested in you enjoying your time playing with them. So definitely try to communicate those things. And they might help you level set expectations, or they might help you uh, resolve conflict within the table. or. Uh, together, you might determine maybe this isn't the best table for you, and that is okay. If you're struggling with your table, don't give up. There are plenty of tables out there, there are lots of amazing players of this game, there are lots of amazing versions of this game, there's other tabletop RPGs as well that are also pretty cool. There are lots of them. You have options for this incredible, collaborative, communal storytelling experience. And I really, really am glad you are trying to get into it. And I really, really hope you have a great, great time. Bye, Bye nerds! nerds.